Welcome back, my fellow makers and phone fanatics. In today's episode, we're going to be making a helmet. Not just a helmet, but a 40K Warhammer helmet. It all started back in 2017. I went to my first Dragon Con. I met these gentlemen dressed in these amazing costumes. I'm like, these things are huge and spectacular. What is this from? They said, oh, it's from the game, Warhammer 40K. And then that following year, I went to Comic-Con Germany and met a group or a battalion of more 40K Warhammer uh, cosplayers based on this game. So I got obsessed and said, I want to build something from 40K. So I went ahead and got on the internet and found Etsy, where my friend Mellow Mine had a 40K Warhammer Space Marine helmet. So that's what we're gonna be making today. Downloaded the patterns and taped them together. As you can see, all the patterns have been uh, spray mounted onto poster board. I always find this makes it easier to transfer onto foam. And to save time, I went ahead and cut these all out. But I want to get a big shout out to Mellow Mind who made these patterns because he lists on the edges, uh, like right here it says 45 on the edges. And you have like, like 30 degrees here, 45. I don't know if I did my 30 that accurately, but anyway, it's close enough, it's beveled. And they're all labeled and destructed. So I went ahead and followed his instructions and cut everything out. So I did ahead on eight millimeter TNT cosplay supply foam. It's good to have a photograph to uh, look at while you're building. This is great. It has an images, different angles of it, and the instructions. So we're going to build it, starting off with part one, two, and three, which we already have cut out here. And I have my heat board. So what I like to do is I'm going to heat curl these pieces just a little bit, not too much, just a slight curl before I glue them. And to prevent from heating the table, I have my heat board. And again, if you don't have acrylic dome, you can just use a softball on a roll of tape. I find it works just as well. Just something slightly curved. You can also do it by hand, but since I have it, I want to use it. Okay, let the gluing begin. Okay, let's start with part one and two. Always find with gluing, when gluing, I always focus on one edge at a time. Here we go, let's line it up, right on the edge, like that, go nice and flush. Just one side, let's go ahead. So we want to number. Then line it up, nice and flush. Keep buying our registration marks. Oh, look at that, half a helmet. All right, got two halves, let's go ahead and glue these guys together. All right, line her up. There it is, look at that, it's coming together. Because right next there is the face plate, look at that. So this is the mouth grill. Go ahead and line these guys up. Okay, there we go. Now that's no, that's the stick. Let's apply our contact cement. Okay. All right, got it. All right, we got our snout glued onto the face shield. This is great. Uh, the helmet now, it had time to dry. So I'm gonna go back in uh, to heat it a little bit because it's kind of bumpy from me pre-curling it. So I want to make this uh, curve a little bit more even. Now we're gonna go ahead and apply some contact cement. All right, line it up, here we go. So first, take that stick down, get the good. First side, line up. Wow, there it is, guys. Look at that. It's coming together. <laughs> so next, we're going to move on to the uh, back piece here. Line this up. Yeah. 
Before gluing this on, let's go ahead and move on to the ear pieces. I went ahead and cut these out. Uh, and when you're getting round edges, every time you try to cut an exacto blade, it always is rough. So I always kind of just keep a lot of it on and go back and clean up with the uh, stone bit. But let's use a sanding drum that happened a lot faster. So. Okay, uh, let's grab one. Let's do it. All right, now line this guy up like this. That. There we go. Everything's falling in place now. All right, guys, we have the ears there are done. Let's go ahead and uh, get an idea. Let's get some placement for them. Line it up just like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and glue in our uh, this detail pieces right here. And line it up, nice and flush. Yeah, look at that. That's nice, awesome. Wow, look at that, guys. It's coming together. Come to think, I think the best way to do this would be to apply it while the glue is wet, which will give me some time to get things in place because it will eventually, the solvent will evaporate. Love this. See, and since it's wet, it can shift it around a little bit and get it to where it wants, where I want it to be. Let's pin it here, All right? And pinning it, what it does is it keeps it from moving around. You see the vapor kind of, the vapor evapor it evaporates, but the glue is still there. So once it dries completely, you can just push it in place. So now we got the uh, the back pieces on. All right, we are pieces together. Uh, we have the next step is we're going to glue on the top of the headpiece. This is um the mohawk. I went ahead and just assembled it. All right, let's go ahead and line this up. Just trying to make, when I, as I laid it down, making sure it stays symmetrical, <laughs> like on both sides. And, oh, look at that. Excellent. All right, the helmet is really coming together. Um, the next thing we're gonna move is we're gonna move on to the ear pieces. Okay, and you hear that? The, the, uh, the ear pieces, uh, again, these are cut out of, uh, was it eight, was it six? I, can't, I have to look again, it's six millimeter foam. I'm gonna take my stone bit and clean these edges up before I glue them on. But again, these circles I've cut out with the Cos Tool Circle Cutter. Again, uh, they have a lot of different tools and it, most of them I think are just simple cutting tools I don't really need, but man, you cannot beat the Circle Cutter. Also, I like them, but I want to add some additional detail. So I went ahead and cut a, uh, two smaller circles out of two millimeter foam and did some notch detail on them. So I'm gonna put these on it as additional detail. I just wanna grab, add a little bit of texture to it. I took the original pattern, traced it to make a template so I could make lines to cut this out. Now we're gonna use a, a craft knife. Ta-da! Ooh, look at that, that's nice. That's great. Let's go ahead and move on to our ear pieces. Line it up. Yeah, this looks great. Nice art. So line this up on the Sharpie mark right here. That's great. Um, we had got that, so let's go ahead. Fantastic. All right. Okay, let's start with the registration. We should start with a mark, right? So we know we're at least on the right track. Perfect, all right, excellent. Now this time I'm gonna apply it while it's still wet. It gives me a little working time. Because trying to do stuff like this with contact cement when it's dry, it'll just grab and you won't let you do what you want to do with it. So it's best just to do it while it's wet, fit it in place, and then let it dry. I'll tell you all, while that is drying, let's go ahead and apply our detail pieces here. The textured foam right here. Get this all. I've already applied contact cement, so line this up. Show up when you paint this. You show a lot of texture, and this looks nice. Now we've got everything in glue placement. Give it a little bit of a once over. Um, 
I'm going to take the stone, I can tell right now, I'm going to take the uh, the stone wheel. I want to clean up, um, I like this. just want to bring some, uh, and there's a little bit of this guy, like this lip. Granted, it's underneath, but I'd like this to round this off, make this mirror each other, make it a little bit more even. And these guys right here where the ears are, with this lip right here, it's nice, but I just want to go and bring these down just a little bit and just do a little cleanup. And I think that'll be it. We have rapid fill. This is the new improved rapid fill. And I'm going to take this, I uh, just go over the seams. All right, yeah, I try to focus mostly on the seam part of it. Take all the excess off the stuff that's flat, right? And I wet my finger, and here, wet my finger, and smooth it like so. All right, everybody, I have to say this looks great. It's all patched up, it's done. All the finessing's turned out great. Um, I'm gonna let this dry a little bit longer. I'm gonna hit this with some, um, is, it, is it dry enough? I have my, this is my 400 grit sanding sponge. You take this guy like this. The one thing I discovered about rapid fill is that some people you can, they say you can use sandpaper, but I found the sandpaper sometimes can snag and break the skin of your uh, rapid fill. So it's best to use a sanding sponge. All right, now it's sanded. I'm gonna take this guy to the spray booth and we're going to proceed to seal it with Creature Cast. And this is the Semi Rigid. And of course, I'm going to be using my siphon gun. So let's do it. Here it is, completely dry. I let this dry for a solid day. This is great, it's all sealed up. Um, this is Creature Cast. I like putting it on heavy uh, so it can go back. And I have some uh, 400 grit sanding sponge here. I'm just gonna lightly, uh, with anything like a little bumpies and things or anything that looks a little uneven, like this guy right here, make my sponge. And if you put it on thick enough, you can actually sand it. So, uh, as you can see right here, uh, there's, there's a little bit of a seam line there. So I took some, uh, rapid fill and just fill these little cracks in. Other than that, it looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and put a base coat. I have some uh, silver spray paint. I'm gonna put the silver spray paint on this as an undercoat. Let this dry, because we're, we're gonna do the chip paint technique. So what I like to do is a silver base first before we put our color coat on. So I'm gonna take this to the spray booth really quickly and uh, put a layer of uh, silver on this. Okay, while the silver coat is drying in the spray booth, you can hear in the background, uh, I made some templates. This is for the, uh, the face, I'm sorry, the mouth guard, and this is for the eyes. And I have some perforated metal, so my plan was just gonna go ahead and just trace this stuff on here and cut it out with some metal shears. All right, there's the helmet, the silver paint is dry. Now we're going to proceed to take some rubber paste. This is my R60 natural rubber I use for sometimes sealing things, but today we're going to use it for masking. Uh, I got a little acid brush, which is disposable. I'm going to dip it inside the latex paste I have here. And we're going to apply it to the edges to create the worn metal look like this. I have a casting of the skull and I'm gonna stick that on here. I forgot I was gonna do that before I painted it. But I can go, come back here with some sandpaper and just get this a little bit of glue on. So I really, I really wanna have this skull on here. Okay, the latex is dry, my color coat. Um, we're gonna go with the Space Wolf Blue. I put it to a vote in chat between yellow and blue. Uh, blue won, so we're gonna put the base coat today. Um, take it to the booth and lay down our Space Wolf Light Blue. There it is. 
the helmet, it's all dry. Now I'm gonna show you why I like latex more than I do toothpaste. So like this. Oh. Boop. Wow, look at that. That's dope. That looks so cool. Come through here. It, it's so thick, it works really well. All right, all the uh, latex has been removed, exposed the chipped paint technique, which is great because it is, it's real chipped paint. Uh, we're going to proceed to mix up my wash. Uh, I got some um, burnt sienna here. I'm gonna use burnt, burnt sienna. Well, it's an old burnt sienna. The... And when I add the black, I gotta be careful, I don't add too much black. Okay, let the aging begin. Now, let's do some blotting. All right, there it is, guys. It's all dry. The aging. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take some alcohol, some denatured alcohol, and a paper towel, and put a little bit on the paper towel. And for example, right here, we're going to start with the skull. See, but it does it really highlights the. Um, it takes it off, but leaves the stuff in the nooks and crannies. Which is All right, I have my high temp shear bunder glue gun with my shear bunder silicone pad. We're going to glue. Um, the eye bending. Now again, this is the, uh, the perforated metal. I had to bend a little bit to make sure it fits in here. I'm gonna set it right behind very carefully with my hot glue gun. All right, there they are with the eye holes. Those are, got the vents in, those are great. Our next step is going to put the, uh, the grill. Um, what I ended up doing is I had some black ABS plastic. I cut my grill. Let's go and line it up. All right, I got glue, you can see I just, I did a couple dabs because it's, it's Pretty well stuffed in there, so the glue's just gonna re-insure it never falls out. Look over. Wow, look at that. That's awesome. You know, I have to say, I believe this is uh this 40k Warhammer Space Marine helmet, the Space Wolf, is done. There it is, my 40K Warhammer Space Wolf helmet. Um, again, real quickly, guys, if you notice, the eyeballs end up replacing, because while I was doing this on my live stream, uh, on chat, on Twitch, um, people informed me that this is a space helmet, so the venting works great for the, ma uh, for the mouth, but not for the eyes, which I thought, yeah, that does make sense. So the space helmet need to have lenses for the eyes, and these are just sunglass lenses. I went ahead and popped the metal ones out. I'll glue these guys back in. Everybody, again, thank you so much for watching. This was fun making. And for all you people out there who turned me on to 40K, I am really jazzed about this game. Building this helmet also inspired me to do some other 40K patterns that will be coming soon. If this is your first time watching my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, tell your friends, leave comments below. This video is from my live stream I do on twitch.tv slash Smith every other Monday and Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. While you go to my website, um, please do your best to get on my mailing list shop through my patterns, and if you shop through my links, every little bit of that helps me keep making videos. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and I'll catch you back next time right here on Evil Ted Live.